Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast, and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. All right, Cypher Sounds, thanks, Yo, for, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm not quite sure what's going on. What yeah, this where is? I am, <laughs> what's happening. I'm doing this for a favor for a friend. Oh, yeah? But he's late. Oh, is he so supposed to come? So this is like some Will weird... Sylvans. No, he's coming later. I'm filming something with him after the podcast. Uh, you know Will Sylvans? Yeah, well, he came on the podcast. Great comedian. Yeah. Horrible friend. Oh, really? Horrible friend. <laughs> Just <laughs> left me here with two... Strangers in a basement. I'm going to... Because of the current times, I'm going to say strange white guys. No offense. Damn. You know what I mean? It's just. So you didn't, wait, you didn't know you were doing a podcast? I knew it was a podcast. I knew, uh, didn't uh, know that. But I wait, didn't know anything in uh, a basement of a jazz club. You brought club. a white friend with you, so it's kind of evens out. Come on. Man. Yeah, just for, you know, I like to keep him around so I don't get shot at. <laughs> you know, you always keep a white guy by you. That's funny. <laughs> so what, he, and he told you he was going to be here with us. Yeah, he said he's running late, though. So oh, about man. an hour and a half late. Yeah, so. <laughs> wow. But I'm fine. Let's, you know, it is what Are it you is. okay being here? <laughs> See, I'm getting acclimated. He's like yeah. checking it I'm out. getting acclimated. He's like, okay, where are the exits? <laughs> yeah. What is this weird trap door here, huh? <laughs> That's where the gear is. You know what? I don't your know. Exits are, your exits are <laughs> there. These are my exits. What about it's that door? No, What's that'll that take you to the, to the dead end. That's you don't, don't want to go there. You don't want to go Yeah, all right. Stay away from that silver, <laughs> steel, triple lock door. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> With a <the> padlock. <laughs> but it's probably, you know, it's something to do. How you been keeping yourself busy during it's these crazy times? Something to time. do, it's man. Something to do. A hundred percent. Here you true. are. You know. No, I've been, I've been, I've been staying pretty busy. Um, but lately, the last two months or so, there's actually a lot of little comedy shows popping up that we're doing. Oh, okay. So that's been fun. Before that was just like stress. Mm -hmm. But um. It's been all right, I guess. I don't know. I try to count my blessings. I mean. Where did you quarantine? Uh, my uh, in-law's house in like, like kind of upstate. Not too far, but like. Nice. Just because I got kids, so they needed space. Yeah. But then I would come back to the city, to my apartment, just to like be alone for a while. That's cool. So yeah. you had two zones. Yeah, I, I, have, I drive. So I, I hate New Yorkers that don't drive. I just got a car. You do, are you from New York? I live in New. I live in the East Village. But you from here? Well, I mean, I've been here for over twenty years. No, I'm not from not, here. Where were you born? Where did you? Ohio. Where was your high school years? Akron, Ohio. Okay, so you learned to drive at fifteen, six, or got yeah. a license at fifteen, six, yeah. sixteen. Yeah, yeah. We we see. I went to high school in Long Island, mm -hmm. so like everyone had cars. So it was just something you had to do. Yeah. And also, my mom drove. But there's a there's I, it's different now. But back in the day, like New Yorkers just don't drive. Mm. But they don't even learn to drive. Right. We're like, bro, what? It's some anything could happen. And you're like, got to go out of town for a family emergency. You can't rent a car. Yeah. Like, you got to know how to drive, yeah. man. So yeah. Anyway, so I yeah I drive. So I was able to go back and forth. Especially nowadays, you need a bug out. Yeah. You need to be able to on a dime move out quick, move, man. especially if you're living in the city. Yeah, you got to be a roll. I'm happy I just got a car. It's wild. Yeah. It's been fun because I went. You had a van. I for went years. a couple years without a car, and it, it was weird. So it feels good. Yeah, if you ha if you used to drive, and then moved to New York and stopped driving, it it must feel weird. It feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it does. But I mean, the city like. It's like great for bike riding. It's also good. Yeah, I got one of those electric skateboards too. Yeah. That's the funnest way to get around the city. No, uh, uh, zipping around the city is possible. Yeah, it's when shit has to get done though. Like That's true. you gotta, <laughs> you need to get into a vehicle. Well, once you have a car too, it just changes your mindset. All of a sudden, the whole rest of America opens up to you easier. Yeah, or something. But even like, even like friends of mine, like girls I know, like. Can you help me go to Ikea? Mm -hmm. Like, get a car, yo. I never <laughs> like, no. I never need help going to Ikea. I just go. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a plan. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to be a, a person of... Um, Color? 
Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> a person of affluence to, to have a car in the city because to park oh, yeah, it, all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it's it's extra for sure. No, car. it's it's not cheap. But I'll tell you what I'm looking at now is RVs. I'm obsessed. Really? Yeah. You get into the RV life? I'm going RV life for at least a year. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm what gonna, do you mean, live in it? I'm gonna live in it just because I want to get out of the city. I did this whole quarantine in the East Village. Yeah. In a studio apartment. Yeah, rough. I'm ready. I mean, I made the most of it, yeah. and it's been cool. And I grew, made some music, did, yeah. got, did a bunch of paintings, and got those in a gallery in yeah, the West wow, Village. Yeah, dope. So things have been cool, but I'm ready for like next chapter. And if they lock down harder, which at least the threat of that seems to be in the air. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to like, okay, I'm I, going RV life now. I saw the first hint of more lockdown. Right. You saw the article that came out last weekend was like, a man in Hong Kong got COVID twice. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, hey, guys, you that, know what that means. That's the mind <laughs> virus right there. That's a 100%. Little, that, that's the first little bit of the mind virus. A hundred. I right. think they. Uh, it's all... There's a lot, you know, I, listen, I don't know who's in charge. Mm. I don't know who's running the world. I know there are right. people running the world. Right. I don't know how they get their message out, who the publicist is of the Illuminati. Okay. But. You and me are on the same page. I already know. Just already like a little, it. like just one drop. <laughs> there you go. Hey, like, he's here. It's like, what's up, Will? I Thanks for bringing me to this weird shop, sex shop. <laughs> <laughs> but like, hey, it's sex not. Sex part hasn't He thinks it's yet. a sex shop. No. That's telling. You ever saw the basement in, uh, in, Pulp, in Pulp Fiction? Fiction? Yeah. Dude, when you said that thing, I almost brought up yeah. Pulp Fiction. That's so it feels fucking like I'm funny. In, Feels like they're gonna gag me any Dude, second. That now. is funny. I almost called that the Pulp Fiction <laughs> yeah. room, but I didn't want to freak you out no, more I'm than saying, you were already I'm freaked out. Away from that room. So it's it's wild. That's funny. <laughs> Just two white guys this in man, a basement. That's you know if weird, that's not a, if know. that's not a gay porn, I never heard of one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know if that picked up, but I'm not gonna I repeat it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they yeah. can't hear you. You I guys am, know my I am Marisa. Uh you know. I could run just a microphone for you for Yeah, why not? Dude, yeah, just get it. Just get on in it. No, I don't want him. Fuck him. Oh fuck, fuck him. him. All right. All right. All right. So yeah, so the little article <laughs> comes out. The little article says man in Hong Kong. So to an ignorant American oh, brain. Mind virus. An ignorant American brain is like Oh, that's in China, right? Mm -hmm. It's every, you know, it's not 100% part of China. It's kind of its own little vibe. But it's in, oh, China. Man gets COVID twice. What? We can get it twice. So now your fear starts oh, to get back up. It's unbelievable. Going back to lockdown. I like what you said in an interview about wokeness being like just the whole thing's fucked up because the premise is built on a wrong word. I thought that was kind of. Where'd you see that? I thought that was genius because I, li <laughs> I like. Did I say cause that? Because I like language too, and I pay attention to language. Oh my god! So when I heard that, I was like, "Man, that's genius!" Because it does it tears down Will, that I'm whole fine. thing. Will, thank you for bringing me here. I love this guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> language is so important. So important. And, and that was, I just love the fact that that whole movement, you just, you know, I like to say it in, you know, you say it, you bodied the whole movement with that. Um, yeah. You know, I observation. Can't, I can't, it's hard for me to take it seriously. Right. Even though I want, I want to be on your side, but you, you're, you're, Ish. your grammar is Some just, of their side. I want to be on every. I want, I want everyone. On, can you explain yeah. what he said? Yeah, I didn't explain. Get it. Explain. The, the Are we talking about the word woke? Yeah. That's the. I want to be on everyone. I want everyone to be on everyone's side. Is my point. Yeah. Um. So what? Yeah, woke is. It, it's it's it's. I don't. How do I say this? It's the wrong word. It's a it's ghetto it. term. It's a ghetto term that instead of saying you're awake, it's woke. But it's incorrect, like the usage of it. It's like past tense. So the movement's based on an in a, incorrect way of using a word, which then that's the seed of the whole movement. It's built off of, okay. a, of a damaged seed in a, in a sense. Right. Yes, it's fruit of the poison, fruit of the poison tree. Here's the thing. He said, he said it in another interview, but yeah, I just said it too in another way. So yeah, I gotta give myself some credit for it. It's supposed to be stay awake. <laughs> stay awake. Right. Stay awake. Stay awake. But it's like stay yeah. woke. And I'm like, oh, you're saying it grammatically incorrectly. God damn it. Yeah. It's like the guy. Okay. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. I just talked about this yesterday. Yesterday, uh, we were at Dave Chappelle's house in Ohio. Happy birthday, Dave Chappelle. Uh 
someone was wearing the shirt of the two black Olympic uh, medalists from the, I think it's from the 60s, mm-hmm. the gold winner and I guess right. the bronze winner. Yeah, okay. And they had the black gloves with their fists in the air. I remember that. You notice one guy has his right fist, the other guy has his left fist. Right. Because the guy who had his left fist up forgot his gloves. So he had to borrow the other guy's glove. Uh. So you want to make a monumental statement about the treatment of people, of your people in this world, and you forget the fucking uh, uh, accessory? How are we supposed to follow this movement if you're forgetting the what? What did you need today? Uh, you needed one to, thing. One job. Bring your gloves. <laughs> He did have a race he to run, though, too. He could have flipped it like, and just know. wore it. <laughs> he should have flipped well, that's it. That's a good fucking point. <laughs> like, come on, dude. You flip it and you just stick that's the why glove I didn't fit. so upset, man. So, yeah, sometimes the you forget the most basic thing. I, I, and this is for everything. I hate the term defund the police. Yeah. Reassess funds. Yeah. Redistribute funds. Uh, 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 uh uh, you know, uh, like look into uh, special inquiry of funds. Right. So you want no cops. I know. It doesn't make sense. It's it's <laughs> it's over the top. It goes over the top. Isn't there a word for it? Like it's a loaded statement that it means more than one thing. Defund the police? Yeah. It's it's not what it actually means. It's a lot. I can't. I'm black that. and white. Right. Yes. I need to know what Say it is. Say what actually, it is. Yes. Say it. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. 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 I need, you can't. Because everybody wants short quick terms for marketing purposes i'm like no no no. i need to know what i'm getting behind here yeah. i have i have absolute 100 percent trouble I'm totally worried about police killing unarmed black people but also i need cops in my neighborhood like i yeah, can't of course what, what are we gonna do yeah and you don't and you, you can be count on this guy yeah i got jared <laughs> with me <laughs> yeah that's weird. Where do you think all, like you were um, sort of talking about it before, you don't know who's running things and whatnot, but where do you think all this stuff is coming from? Do you think it is agents of chaos, or what do you think? Uh, wait, what which things? Like defund the police, all this stuff, like the, the stuff that's like, you know, potentially destroying the country or destroying our freedoms and making more people sheeple and all that kind of stuff. It's, I mean, where do you think it comes from? Oh man, it's, it's way too layered. Here's the thing. There are definitely people who have, it's, it's not even, I can't even say they have so much money. They have all the money. Mm -hmm. Right. And they are, that we are just toys to them. Right. And they marionette and play the game of what they can do in the world. Yeah, and it's like they get bored at a certain point, and they want no, let's see how know, much we can fuck with it. This I'm friends way. with a number of millionaires, close and, to billionaires. And I see, I I'm actually friends with a couple billionaires, right? And I see the boredom. Yeah. Oh. So you're telling me you're a quadruple put billion billionaire? Yeah, you're bored. What? And you can you control the world? Like how? Like how good? Can your private jet get? Yeah, it can't get. That it's good. only but so many things you could. You could get a seven forty seven with every single thing in there, yeah. and everything you ever do is catered to. It has to get boring. Yeah, it's a god sized hole they're trying to fill up. Yeah, there is no way. So there's some kind of play with us, you know, and us meaning just people mm-hmm. and every country. Every country. What are countries? What right. is land? What is any of it? I can't go to Canada. It's literally connected to my state. Mm-hmm. But you can't go. You can't cross this line. Right. Why not? It's all an illusion. So that being said, here's how I play. Like, let's just, I'll bring it down a couple notches. Capitalism. I'm a, I'm a participant. Mm-hmm. I want it. I'm in it. I want to make money and be comfortable and be successful. I don't vote. I don't play the politics game. So take me out of certain parts of the game you're playing because it doesn't affect me and I don't affect you. Like the part where like voting and moving politicians around, like go ahead, play your game. I'm fine with it. What's my fee? Taxes, here you go, every year. Here's my fee to play the game. Mm -hmm. But don't fuck me 
in a time like now where there's all this political shit, I don't know how a, a disease became political. Right. But fine, it is. That's your game you're playing. I'm not going to bother you. Right. Do anything you want to get your votes or movements or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just can I get, can I make my money, please? I like it. It's like, I disagree to play this game. I don't have to play this game. Yeah. But are, are you having success not playing this game? Because it's really difficult not to play. They're making it harder and harder they're, they're, not they're to just, play. It's just all group. I wish there was like a census for like, hey, are you, I'm going to try to take this shit over. Are you going to fuck with me? No, I just want my peace. Okay, mm -hmm. you go in this box. We're not going to bother you. You're allowed to go work. And then uh, they ask someone else, hey, that's gonna, that's I, that's idealistic thinking. Oh, I know, of yeah, course. Yeah. But I want like somebody else <laughs> like, is like, nah. They don't want examples of people getting on with it in their independence I'll out keep, there, dude. I'll keep the secret. No, <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> I promise I will keep the secret. He says on a podcast <laughs> in a Pulp Fiction basement. <laughs> I'll keep your little secret. Yeah, I don't. This whole shit is like. I mean, and it's all just my opinion. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I just see like, I see like, it's a little different. Now it's like really revved up. Yeah. But like, I know for a fact that you'll watch C-SPAN, where nobody watches C-SPAN, but you'll watch a Republican go up and give this speech against something. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see a Democrat go up and give this speech for something. Mm -hmm. And they're screaming at each other, yelling, opposing sides. Cameras go off. They go get a steak dinner together. Mm -hmm. Or they go play golf together. Right. So how am I supposed to buy anything you're saying if it's like you're just pandering to your people? Right. Fine. Great. I all, can I come to the steak dinner? Yeah. That's all I, I want steak too. And you don't and you don't celebrate holidays either, no. like like because of like the five percenter thing. Is that like that's like the where it started? Yeah. That's where it starts. Yeah. At. Everything. Any like knowledge. Valentine's Day, Christmas, none of that. No. And no. how and do you, how like if you get into new relationships. How does that go down with I mean, like somebody who's like not in, on that page? You can't argue my you can't argue my points. Like I can't, I've never lost this fight. Like how do you do it? Let me know because I want to be more of an individual. I'm st I'm still a dupe in certain ways. Well, Christmas is easy. Yeah. I'm not a Christian, right? So that's your Lord's birthday. By all means, celebrate. Right. Don't push it on me. I'm not Christian. Right. Oh, and I love this one. What about the kids? Yeah, what about them? Mm -hmm. I'm not. They're not Christian. Either. Well, they are Christian on are Catholic on the other side. Right. But what does that mean? You told your kids about Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's what? Why do you think they care about it? If you don't tell them about it, they'll fucking won't care. Mm. But yeah, any religious holidays is easy. I get out of it very easily. I'm not that religious. But Valentine's Day, that's got to be tough if that's, you're dating. All, some all that stuff is made up. I know, oh, but, I'm, that, but I'm with them on that. <laughs> well, Not okay. even knowing what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. I hate holidays. It's Thanksgiving all bullshit. Is a, yeah, Thanksgiving is a rough one because it's all celebrating it. literally the slaughter of the people who were here beforehand. I, that was kind of easy too, like right. because I I get away with Thanksgiving because I get so graphic. People just don't want to hear me talk about it anymore. Yeah, I'm already ready to change the yeah. subject. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like listen. No, oh, go ahead. also, here's the thing with Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, here's the excuses you get. Oh, but family gets together mm -hmm. and you cook this big meal. Hey, you can schedule that any, any time of the year. Mm. You can get your, your, why does it matter? You want to get your family together and you want to cook turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce, whatever. What does it matter that the people next door are also doing it that day? Right. Just plan a day. Grandma's birthday. We all fly in. Mm. We all get together. We make a meal. Why does it have to be that day? Why do they have to tell you what day to celebrate your family? Yeah, or Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the same. same. Who? I'm with them. Who are you telling <laughs> yeah, me? me too. I had this argument with Suzette. My girlfriend is yeah. Christian, and Christmas, and I was like, and we couldn't go up on Christmas. She's like, it's Christmas. We, I said, let's do it the day before. Two day, it doesn't matter what day it is. Say it's Christmas and do your thing. It's do not... It. What's it? Doesn't How many times does your birthday fall on a Wednesday and you celebrate it on Friday? Yeah, it's it's the same thing. Like Jesus' birthday is like we can't do it today. We have to fly that day. Let's just do it. Exactly. People get so, oh, oh my god. But yo, Mother's Day. Who are you to tell me when to celebrate my mother? 
Are you crazy? So how much does it drive you crazy in living in this day and age where you see so many people like parroting the mainstream media narrative like on a scale more widespread than ever? Like it's practically got, uh, a Twilight Zone episode out here now. So I like, was, what do you, what, what you mean right drive, now? Yeah, just doesn't it drive you insane? What is, how are you I, handling it? Because I, it used to. When I was younger, it used to. When, I, when you first get knowledge... When you first get when you woke, first get when you first get awake, <laughs> <laughs> when you get awakened, uh, have awoken, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Right. And then you have, to, as you get older and live life, you realize that certain things are like people. Some people need structure mm-hmm. and need guidance, and need, and it's much easier to just fight. Fo- on the calendar, it's already there, printed on the calendar. Mm-hmm. When you get it, when you buy it at the end of the top of the year, uh, mother, f- uh, May, whatever, Mother's Day. Okay, got it. Boom, you know. And it's like, every month there's something like Fourth of July. Fourth of July. You know, how, nobody can hear you. What do you think about the Fourth of July? Yes, yeah, I get it. It's, it's, I I <laughs> I actually I actually get Fourth of July more than any other holiday, right? Because I do celebrate birthdays. Yeah, I do celebrate significant significant occurrences in your life. Anniversaries are very important. Graduations, uh, you know, work promotions, accomplishments, all that I celebrate. Mm-hmm. I don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I celebrate my anniversary, and I celebrate my anniversary of just. Being together, marriage, you know what I mean? There's a lot of anniversaries. Mm-hmm. Those are personal to me. So whatever you do on Valentine's Day, I do on my anniversary. I don't need the Valentine's one. Right. Um, before the July, even though it's a crooked game. But this shit been crooked. It's been crooked. Like Will was talking about this the other day with Talib Kweli, not to name drop. Jay-Z told me never to name drop. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Will Smith told me the same thing. <laughs> Never tell me, never name drop. crazy. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, Poppy. Will Smith. He upped you, I guess. <laughs> it's like um, people say, put, p- people say the police force is broken. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's not broken. It's working 100% the way it was supposed to be working from slave times. Mm. It's not broken. You just get, <clears throat> you just have more opportunities now. Plus, there's like the word spreads more. But like, but for something to be broken, that means it was working to begin with. And right, it got broken. right. It was never it's never working. It, ne- it needs to be no, rebuilt. No, it works. It works for what? It works it, for, for, what they, for its objective. Hey, you guys on the horse, you make sure these slaves don't get away. Mm-hmm. Got it, boss. What's the difference? Right. It's the same thing. It's working fine to the people who built it. Right. So the country's fucked up, but I don't want to live anywhere else. Exactly. Mm. I don't want to live in another country. I like America. I like what I've built here. I like how it is. I, I, I don't want to learn new rules. I get the rules here. I, uh, uh, Fourth of July celebrates independence and was able to birth this country. I get a birthday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't really celebrate it. I don't go nuts, but. I get it. Well, I think we could, you know, take this moment to try to rebuild the police department into something that's that, that's functional and not for it what it originally was intended for. I, but this is a language thing. Yeah. I yes, it needs to be changed. Changed. It's not broken. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm, it's broken I'm good to with what you. I, I, of course, it's broken. You know, yeah. I'm being philosophical. I got uh, you. Semantics, but uh, but that's how that's what they wanted it to be, and that's what it is. And yeah. now, now you are more aware of it. So you're like, we don't want it to be this way. And they're like, oh, no, this is how we built it. Right. <laughs> so it didn't change in the last 20 years. It's always been that. How did you become a 5%er? Where's, what's the origin of that? Hip-hop. Hip-hop? Yeah. I re- uh, so I moved to Long Island in 10th grade from the Bronx. Okay. So I got way more into music because music was just around in the Bronx. Everywhere I went, every, my, my friend's older brother had every new album every Tuesday. So it was just around. When I moved to Long Island and it got taken away from me, I searched for it more. Interesting. I got more into music because it was a connection to my old neighborhood that I missed. Yeah. And in the early 90s, 5%er was all, 5%er talk 
was all in hip hop. Okay. Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, Poor Righteous Teachers, Brand Nubian is a big one. Even um uh even um Wu Tang okay. is a lot of five percent of shit. I didn't know that. So yeah, like like so like five percent of talk. Oh, so I read the autobiography of Malcolm X. This is when I was young, so it was confusing. The autobiography of Malcolm X is about him joining the nation of Islam. The five percenter, the nation of of gods and earths, five percenter is a guy who left the nation of Islam and started his own. I don't know what you call it, cult. It's not a cult, but his, his own his culture, own, his own faction, or his own. Yeah, so it's basically the teachings of the nation of Islam without the religion. So they don't you don't pray to a mystery god in the sky, but all their lessons that Elijah Muhammad would teach, this guy taught the same lessons, but without the like you don't have to pray to God. We are God. Right. Okay. So. So is that what attracts you to it? The fact that it's like this self. Well, the Malcolm X book, oh, I lo- Malcolm X changed my life. Right. Did you like the film that Spike Lee made? I liked it. I liked it. It's a little. You know, you're turning a big ass book into a two hour movie gets, right. you know, some stuff has to get cut. Yeah. But, like, you know, the guy who turned Malcolm X into a Muslim in jail, it was really like three or four guys. But for the movie, it was one guy just to focus it, you yeah. know, stuff like that. But it was good. It was, you know, Denzel. It was yeah, it's amazing. Killed. Who else could play Malcolm like that? That was awesome. But, um, I didn't know there was a difference at the time. So the words I read in the book of Malcolm X were the same words Brand Nubian was rapping about wow so to me it was all the same i didn't realize nation of islam was different than five percenters mm. but um i was talking it's so funny i kept t- i was talking about Qual- to quali about this the other day i'm lucky because the gang i joined with most people my age joined gangs the gang i joined was the five percenters which was all about gaining knowledge mm. even though they did some rough gang shit too but really the basis of it was gaining knowledge that's the whole thing. One, the number one is knowledge. So that set me on a path to learn. Mm. Before that, I wasn't. I was just a dumb kid. I just watched TV. Like I didn't have any goals, any dreams, nothing. So, so you, but you started learning a lot, and it, oh, it, I read so much. You're like one of the first podcasters of all time, right? Hip hop podcast. Hip hop podcast. Yeah. Like used, and then that led to the Hot 97 radio show, right? No, that was before. Oh, okay. It, well, the morning show. The morning show. The podcast was birthed because me and my morning show co-host had just met, and we wanted to see what we sounded like with each other. Oh, okay. So he was like, "Let's do a podcast," and I was like, "What's a podcast?" And we, we just what year to... was that? Oh, six or that's, seven. That's crazy early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was super ahead of the time. We, oh, we we definitely generated zero income from it. Uh, not like you guys now. Shout out, same here. <laughs> uh, was it called yeah. podcast? That's in not 06? true. We're fucking banking. We're banking. getting bags, dude. Let's manifest. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. create our own reality. We got to be careful with our language. Ninety nine episodes. Got to be careful with words. Yeah, your brain doesn't know the difference between uh, fact or fiction fact or or real. exactly. You got to speak. You got to speak your narrative into existence. Yeah. That's why the part of your story that's like this. There's a continual narrative of like, oh, you haven't gotten your due, but actually let's change the narrative to you kind of are getting your due. Like people know how many acts you've broken and how many things you've been a part of. And yeah. the fact that you started the sort of hip hop, like morning radio stuff, yeah. like that's become huge. I, th- I, yeah, I just, you know, I, yeah, my life is great. Right. <laughs> uh, my life is great. I just, I could use a little bit more money. A little bit of a boost. <laughs> a boost. I just, yo, my life would not change. <laughs> a boost. A, little, a booster. You know? I like yeah. that word. A boost. <laughs> my life would not change much if I got a million dollars or ten million dollars tomorrow. Right. My life wouldn't change much. It's everything would just be a lot more comfortable, mm-hmm. including my friends, and. That's it. That's really it. Like, and there would just be more security for my family. Mm-hmm. Is, I would wear the same clothes. I'd buy more sneakers, but just because I like it. Like, I wouldn't have to go. Oh, can I afford these sneakers? And no. you'd have the closet space. I'd have the closet space. You know, you get that extra closet. Like, <laughs> he's wearing Jordans. By private the way, jet. So am I. 
Right. <laughs> I'd private jet Both black once and in red a while. Ones. Yeah. Not you, every single time. No. And a copter here and there. Here and there. Here and there. How'd you fly out to Chappelle's place? Uh, this coach? time was oh, commercial. Yeah. Nice, commercial? Se- nice segue. Yeah. Nice segue. Well, he's good flying. That's this one was commercial. So, Chappelle. Commercial? He didn't send a jet for you guys? Not this time. Come on. He has before. Come what, on, Dave. And he gave me, he Come gave me, on, Dave. He said I could ride on a jet home, but my car was already parked at Newark. So. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. What's the point? What was that like? Ohio, that's my where I'm from. So Yeah, you're from Akron. Akron. That's where LeBron is from? LeBron, yeah, same What hunt, else yeah. is from Akron? Black Keys, Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders. Mm, <laughs> He's like, nope, <laughs> next. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I think uh, there's a rapper from Akron. Yeah, there is. We we talked about this. I forget <clears throat> who it was. There, There's one from uh, the era. It, um, what's that guy's it name? He was signed up. to Rick Ross for a while. What's the guy's name? So you're in the manifestation and stuff. Abraham yeah. Hicks. You ever listen to that? Or no, what's that? Joe, Joe Dispenza. You ever Joe heard? Dispenza. I like you know him. Joe Dispenza? Yes. You are the placebo? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love him too. Yeah. You ever do his meditations on Not YouTube? Y- well, uh, He's got some guided ones on YouTube that are killing. On YouTube? Yeah. I feel like every time I look at his stuff, you got to buy something. Oh, yeah. That kind of sucks with the whole self-help <laughs> thing. They always, they always have an angle. <laughs> what? Uh-huh. No, they're from Cleveland. Cleveland. Oh, yeah. From Akron. I mean, Cleveland is like 30 minutes away. It's yeah. essentially, it's kind of like Brooklyn and New York in a way. Put rappers signed oh, to man. Rick Dizzy Ross. Bone? No. No, no, no. Put rappers signed to Rick Ross. And it's going to come up. And you, um, bro- and you broke Rick Ross hustling, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I broke that song. Um, can't break music like that anymore on the radio. I played it over and over and, and over clubs. and over. No, well, that one broke from the radio. No. It doesn't come up. Never All mind. Right, forget it. So forget it. I I heard you, and no. The answer's still no. That's not who I was thinking of, though. Maybe the guy's not from Akron. Not Swoop. I would, Usually I know I'm up on those things because, you know, Akron probably It might not be Akron, but it is definitely Ohio. So um, how was the Chappelle thing? Oh, it was great. Well, this one wasn't as great for me because... Now this Chappelle's doing this thing that they've dubbed it um, Chappelle Summer Camp. Yeah, I saw that. And you go to his house or his town in Ohio, Yellow Springs, which is like this weird hippie bubble in the middle of like Trump country. It's so weird. And he um, has this cornfield that is it's this pavilion. It's like a, it's a place where they do a lot of like <clears throat> weddings and catered events. Mm-hmm. There's like this huge what I call a gazebo. Apparently it's a pavilion. And then there's this, this land. And I went to a wedding there once. That's how I know they do weddings there. Jerobi from A Tribe Called Quest. He got married there. Mm. And then so he started doing these shows, uh, you know, when, when the corona shit hit. And they've grown to be like this massive, amazing corona destination. You know what I mean? Like you can get a ticket and go see Dave Chappelle and whatever celebrity decide to show up that week. And go see an amazing show. Every week he does it? Yeah, he's been doing it every week. Open to the public ticketed. Yeah, it's hard to find. Like, you got to, like, be on, like, the I think the Dave Chappelle Live Nation email list to even, like, get the invite. Yeah. Oh, and you can't, like, <clears throat> film it or anything like that. No. Probably. Does he film them all? He's filming, yeah. He's filming it. But, uh, no, there's no phones. There's, you, there's a COVID testing site. You can get a COVID test. Um, you get a Dave Chappelle f- mask, which is dope. And you like let we were there. I was only there Saturday. Will went Friday, but Saturday was Will, Artie Fuqua, me, Michelle Wolf, Mo Ammer, Donnell Rawlings, Bill Burr, amazing. Kevin Hart. Wow, what a lot! What a lot! That's, that's amazing. And what? Tony Woods Dude. and, uh, and uh, this rapper from Houston named Toby. I don't know how to say his last name. It's like an African name. Who's an amazing new rapper? That sounds like a five-hour and gig. Poet. And a poet. I forgot the poet's name. <laughs> sounds also. like the most amazing comedy festival of all time. I and that I one, mean, I dude. Like that's every. That's like so many heavyweights. It's but crazy. I, the last time I went was me, like Mo Ammer, Michelle Wolf, Donnell Rollins. They pretty much live there. Yeah. Talib Kweli pretty much lives there. If they were gonna quarantine. They're like, fuck it, let's do it here where we have love and we have friends and, you know. Smart. I couldn't do it because I got fucking, uh, fucking offspring. <laughs> 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 fucking kids ruined my Hang summer. Hang with you. <laughs> last, well, last time I went was me, Donnell, Mo, Michelle, and uh, Louis C.K. 
Right. I heard um, about that. Another time. Oh, I Louis went. did it, huh? Yeah, he brought Louis out. Yep, Louis. The, the week before we went, Brian Regan was there. John Stewart was there. Uh, Chris Rock. I like the Louie joke where he goes, when something bad happens, you find out who your real friends are. And he's yeah. like, really? You're my real friends? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't it be somebody else? That one is like so fucking funny. Oh, you're the real one? <laughs> anyway. He's great, yo. Yeah. So funny. So uh, Who gets invited? Just his friends or? Well, now, that's what, I was, that's what I was saying. I didn't have such a great time this time because now it's a thing. Uh -huh. Oh, now it's like right. Not only is it oh another week I went. It was like um it was Fourth of July. I went to celebrate America's birthday. Right. Congratulations! That was more of a music. <laughs> mazel, mazel, mazel. Mazel. So yeah, that was Questlove, <laughs> Common. Those are his friends. Erica Badu, um, John Hamm. I got very cool with John Hamm. Nice. That's a trip. This weekend I got cool with Andrew Yang. Nice. I'm part of the Yang gang. Yeah, you're <laughs> Yang gang. I sort of was. You're I mean, the original yeah. Yang he ganger. dipped out. I was like, I was starting to get on his thing, yeah. and then he dipped out. I he, was like, I damn, I was about to be on the I, Yang gang. From what I think, I, this is not what he told me. What I think was, he put his name in the game yeah, in the, the race to later. get more familiar. But I think eventually he's gonna go yeah. for it. Come yeah. back. But yeah, he's like, I liked I, his ideas. Yeah, his ideas are uh, real. And about where like joblessness is going was alarming yeah. to hear, and the way he would put it. Was, and and it's literally happening now. Yeah, you know what I mean, like the, all the retail stuff and all that. No, that's true. Oh, it's gonna happen even on yeah. a crazier level because he was saying all that before all this yeah, economic that's what I'm saying, yeah. meltdown. So yeah. Um. So yeah, it's been a. Great so you were kicking episode. it with him. Yeah, it was super cool, and like, uh, and then there's other like these are these are the performers, but like Andrew Yang, um, there's like other people like just. Just affluent, like lawyers, doctors, acad academic people, like just everyone around Dave is just super cool, man. Mm. Um, you know, there's like all different types of people, and it's like it's funny, like Dave Chappelle puts off such this aura that if he says you're if you're invited to this, Dave Chappelle says you're cool. So now you know everyone else invited is cool. So like you instant like we're like in this community like you're like instantly a country club. friends yes but like in the heaven or something yes <laughs> like, yeah like, you're instantly <laughs> you're instantly no if you're invited and you have yeah. a white or black wristband yeah that means you got covid tested so like we can even hug and you know show love to our friends we don't have to be scared Kinda like backstage at a music festival mm. it's a yes yeah, what'd you approval. say will he, he said it's a uh, oh right yeah it's like a dave Chappelle stamp of approval he said yeah and uh and yeah he has such great like another time it's like getting made yeah yeah in, in, in like in the Goodfellas or some shit another time like I, he <laughs> said uh, he said I could go on the private jet when he used to do this thing at his house called the Juke Joint uh -huh. which is just like a, a ten hour music jazz blues and like the the band consists of members of Stevie Wonder's band and Prince's band like it's like the That's sickest crazy. shit yeah um so he calls me this is like a couple years ago. He goes, yo, um, yo, there's a seat, there's a seat on the jet if you want it. I said, oh yeah. He's like, yo, don't be late though, because there's some people coming on the jet, mm. so I won't be late. So I got to the airport <laughs> super early. I was there first. This, this is the order of the don't way people late. walked in. <laughs> David Blaine, the magician. I love him, man. David Blaine, great. <laughs> yeah, shout out David then, Blaine. Then Bradley Cooper walks into the airport. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. Then, uh, <laughs> so far, you got so it. So far, Chip and Jerobi nice. from Tribe Called Quest. Nice. Then, Gail King. Then, Naomi Campbell and her manager, who's like a famous <laughs> model manager who like broke all these, like she created like the black supermodel, mm. this this woman, okay. who's, who happens to be Kadeem Hardison's uh, mom. I forgot her name, but she's Kareem Hardison's mom. Kareem Hardison from um, Different World, you know, Dwayne Wade. Oh, yeah, classes. yeah, yeah. That's his mom. And I, oh, and Marcus, Dave's friend from high school. <laughs> and, and it's like, we're just on this jet and like everyone just, if Dave said you can ride, you're, we know you're cool. Every, I mean, I knew some people. I knew David Blaine. I knew Q Tip and Jerobi. Was David Blaine doing card tricks the whole time? I would, be, I would, I would. He would be my number one to sit next to. I'd be like, blow my mind He's this whole class. I'd be like, dude, I just want you to blow my fucking mind. He exited the plane and came back <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah. like, mid air. Dude, can you go on the wing and just let me see you ride out there real quick? The guys, fucking bending quarters on the plane. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. Funny. Yeah. 
Yeah, Ascension but yeah, that, is but that's coming up. that's the Dave Chappelle world, which is the guy is like, I don't know, man, he's next level. Good. For I'm him. a huge Frank Sinatra fan. Me too. I like in the wee small hours. Yeah, that's my favorite. Huge Frank Sinatra fan. To me, Dave Chappelle is our Frank Sinatra. The way he gathered, you know, Frank Sinatra would never let you leave oh, yeah, the party. True. You'd stay till the sun came up. He would out drink everybody. He's at, and and have the great all the talent come. Yeah. Um. That's sim- That's how. That's how Dave is to me. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying to think who am I though in the in the Rat Pack world. Right. Mm. Dean Martin. I'm not Dean Martin. I don't know. Uh, Throwing it out there. I'm low. I'm lower. Lower I'm low on the- level. Don't say that. Remember you. Remember what you just said about the subconscious. Listen, like, does it? Come on. I know. I know. We manifest. We manifest our reality. Listen. You're upper. I'm low, I sh- you're upper level. Upper I'm echelon. low level in the Up Dave level. world, nah. but I'm there. He's I'm happy to there. be there multiple yeah. times. I mean, come on. Well, you were the DJ on the Chappelle show, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like. Yeah, that was uh, that's upper echelon in my world. Yeah, that's a. Well, you were on that. Cla- you were on a was, classic show. I mean, that's like. Yeah. Insane, dude. You've been on so many classic things and been a part of so many classic things. I'm not blowing smoke, but that is pretty awesome. No, yeah, my life is awesome. Yeah, and so, like, I got a question for you because you started comedy a little bit later on, right? Yeah. It wasn't your initial wheelhouse. No, no, no. Not at all. And, and you were already witnessing people like Chappelle, who's like, I guess we, we could say, like, the Michael Jordan of comedy or yeah. something like that, you know? So it's like you're around the very best, the and, best. In, in a in a deep way like yeah. you're part of the show yeah so was that intimidating when you first like was there a demon in your brain going like oh you're gonna start this like you know like you were in somebody's atmosphere that is that deep because uh, i know because i have comedic like goals and aspirations and i don't even have those kind of like backgrounds yeah, and yeah, i'm yeah. still intimidated to start it but anyway yeah um not as much but only because i had a weird start I didn't start out going, okay, I'm going to sit down and write jokes right. and become a great comedian. I like I I was funny on the radio. Right. And then uh I got my I just produced a show. Cuz I was like, "Oh, everyone on the radio, everyone who listens to my show thinks I'm funny. How can I make money off of this? Right. I'm going to produce a comedy show, get some great comics, invite I had all the rappers there, all the fucking NBA stars and NFL stars. It was crazy my show. And then, so I would just host it. And then from there, I just would get a laugh and then another laugh. And I started getting, wanted to do it more and more and more. But I didn't think, it was just like a, almost like a hobby. Right. Because I was still on the radio. I still was a DJ. I was still on the radio. I still had my whole life. My career was already set. Yeah. This was like, oh, I kind of like doing this too. I was like, the hours are good because you do comedy from like 7 to midnight, and then I can go DJ from midnight to 4 a.m. Right. Like, it kind of like, I could do comedy before I go DJ, and then, you know, I still live my life. And it's still just a kind of a hang and social yeah. time and stuff anyway yeah. as well. And then, but then, you know, as you know, comedy, like, once, you, if you really want to do it, it grabs a hold of you. And then, it, then I got into it. Um, but like I didn't really feel intimidated by them. I just wanted to impress them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would get. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really intimidation. But I just wanted them to think I was good. I I also was worried about them thinking that I came from another world and was like intruding. Mm-hmm. So I made sure I did everything the quote unquote right way. I didn't like. Because of my name, I didn't force myself into things that I didn't deserve yet as a comic. Mm. So I would, you know, I'll, I'll open for anybody. Like, I open for people who I may have more money than, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, or I'm way older than. It doesn't right. matter to me. Like, this is the route. Yeah. You got to climb the, the, the ladder. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'll, I open for, like, like. Fucking like Andrew Schultz used to just be a guest on my show and he used to come on my radio show. Yeah. Like, and like, then he blew up. Yeah. So it's like some people with an ego would be like, I'm not opening for Andrew Schultz. Like, I'm fucking, I was bigger than Andrew Schultz. Like, no. He's got a comedy crowd. Stage time is king. You know what I'm saying? That, right. That happens with music too. Music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Too. I've had people open up for me that went way up. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it flips, yeah. and you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I've seen it all, and like, also, I don't have like this pride thing where, like, I don't know, maybe because my dad died when I was young, 
But I never had this like you gotta make sure no one disrespects you and stick up for yourself and make. I was like, I, I, no, people are gonna try to disrespect you either way. So I'm trying right. to get. You know what I mean, like you, your words don't affect me. You're not. Oh, you you suck. You bomb. You're not good at this. All right. How did well, you develop that that skin that your words don't affect me? The the uh, the book, the Four Agreements. Oh yeah, don't take things personal. Don't take things personal. Literally. I know I know my life the moment I opened the book, mm-hmm. and then I closed the book and was a completely different person. One book. That's a, that That's is, a short read. It's true, man. What's if it you called? if you can practice those four agreements, your life yeah. will be way way the better. The four agreements. Don Ruiz. Yeah, I don't know some sp- junior. I think Spanish name. I don't know. <laughs> Don Miguel Ru- Lu- Ru- yeah. Lu- Ruiz. I think. But junior, not. But maybe, that chapter know. specifically. Don't yeah. take things personal. And you never have, make assumptions. No idea. What happens at when they say some shit to you, you have no idea what their life is, what happened in their childhood, what happened two minutes before they saw you. Mm-hmm. They could have had a fight with their girlfriend and they're taking it out on you. I don't take nothing personal, nothing. And they're just projecting on you anyway. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. You know, every once in a while there's something that makes me cringe for a second, but it was like, just yeah. keep moving. Yeah, and mm-hmm. never make assumptions. Be impeccable with your word and yeah. do your best. Yeah. yeah, those are the four. Yeah, I'm trying to get I all like of them. It. They're hard. Be impeccable with your word. Never lie. That's a tough yeah, one. That one. That one. I'm not gonna. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> that one's. That one's not. I'm easy. writing a book called three the Three Agreements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I got a book let's called. Settle on three. <laughs> let's agree to just do three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lie so my ass off. You, you kept saying you, you wanted them to accept you, meaning other comedians like Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, yeah. at what point did you get like the the approval where so, the, somebody came up to you and said, "Man, you're the Chappelle one is recent. The Chappelle one is that's the one I wanted. That was that was. Oh, the and, one. and he just came up. Recently, yeah. Um, what do you say? Uh, like I, I mean, no comic is really gonna sit there, look you in the eye, and be like, "Man, you're killing." It. You no, just right, gotta, then right, you right, felt right. peer but level. You gotta catch. No, he did though. That's what I'm saying. But oh. you gotta just catch the the, the signs. Mm-hmm. Like I toured with Michael Che from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. He doesn't like touring with anyone. He doesn't even like being around people. So the fact that I keep going on the road with him, I know. He accepts me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. He approves of what I'm doing on stage, or I wouldn't be there. Right. Uh, but I recently I did a Dave a Dave show. Um, it was let's say December, right before the remember the remember the world we had before uh, March. Uh, b- barely. Remember the world? Uh, kind of. So <laughs> yeah, it was a dream world. I go. I so Dave has a DJ. His name is DJ Trauma. When Trauma gets another gig, they call me to fill in because I can DJ. The thing is, when I DJ for Dave, I always ask if I could do five or ten minutes up top. Mm. Everyone always says yes because who the fuck wants to go first? <laughs> if it's just <laughs> if it's just trauma, Donnell Rawlings and Dave, Donnell's like, fine, you go first, right? right? Like, so I I cater my DJing to my DJing is funny also when I do stand up, so it's like funny, and then I do ten minutes. But Dave wouldn't even sometimes be even in, in the building, but he he said yes, but he never really heard me. I'm like, oh, did Dave hear me? They're like, Dave's not even here yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> just do another up. 10. Dude, yeah. go, go, on, go long. So, so, but I only would get called. I could go and hang out with Dave whenever I want, but I would get called to work when trauma wasn't there. And last, in December, uh, Dave's tour manager called me. It was like, hey, we're going to do like a, like a six-city run or a seven-city run. Uh, trauma's coming halfway through. Can you do the first half? So yeah, of course. So they're like the first one is Denver Comedy Works, which is a great comedy club. It's mm. like one of the top five in the country. And he goes, yeah, it's just you and Dave. And I was like, okay, who's opening? He goes, no, you and Dave. Wow. It's like a comedy club. It was like the first time Dave was going out before he started working on the next special. Okay. And this is like the just like the right. him just blah like getting his thoughts out. Yeah, three hours which of yapping with which the Which is audience. usually the funniest shit. Oh, it's like the rawest, from, from him, it's like the rawest, that one so good. video where he's like seven hours just yeah. in that. It's like the funniest yeah, shit it's I've ever fun, seen. Man. Anyway, it's fun. So then, so I DJ for like twenty minutes. Uh-huh. Then I do like twenty twenty five stand up. Wow. And then Dave comes out, and the green room is literally right behind the stage. 
I mean, uh, Brad Williams, you know, Brad Williams, he's a little guy. Comic. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's like a, I don't, you're not supposed to say midget, but he always says it. Um, he was there one night too, so it was me, Brad Williams, and Dave. But um, the green room's right behind the stage. In between shows, I come, you know, I come off, and Dave was like, yo, man, you got nice. Like, and it was like so genuine. Wow. Like, I almost cried, man. Like, wow. And I was like, fuck, this is what I've been waiting for. I was like, wow. I'm, I'm good now. Wow, yeah. If Dave yeah. says it, I'm good. And then, um, like then the we did said it more too. shows. Now huh? you can retire. I like the way he said it. Oh, yeah. You got was, nice. That's, yeah. a, that's a great, in the, I don't know. Like him hearing it and yeah. all of it, you know? And then, um, and it was, they were good shows. Like literally the tape I used to get other gigs is that tape. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, and then, so then the next night, I think Donnell came. So now it wasn't just me and Dave anymore, but it was still good. Then the next night, this other girl, Ashley, that opens up for Dave came. So now we're back to normal. Okay. Now I don't even get, like, the thing, like the, the commodity is the Dave time. Right. The one-on-one Dave time. Yeah. That's why I didn't like Ohio this weekend. I didn't get any Dave time. Right. It, I mean, was, it was too big. It's too many people. Yeah, it was like it was a, like, I need my Dave time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave, Dave one-on-one is life lessons, bro. Oh, yeah, like what? Fucking just the, his, his mind, his philosophy, his way he looks at the world. The last time, I know I'm jumping all over the place. I'm sorry. That's okay. like a Howard Stern interview. That's fun. Fascinating. I was on a plane with Dave, and everybody was sleeping. And I was like, Dave, can I ask you a question? And this is my Dave time. I'm like, (laughs) how do you, how do you find the way to organize all your friends, whether it be your high school buddies and your celebrity powerhouses, to all be in one place hanging out? The the annoying factor of like flights, rooms, publicists, managers, food. Like, how do you do all? Why do you do this? Because like, I want to do it, but I can't. I know the stress it must bring. And he, I just like, how do you do it? Because I want to get better at it. And he was like, man, he's like, my dad taught me all about community. It's all about community. And he was telling me his dad would always be the guy that brought something to the new neighbors moving in and organized the community center, whatever, shows and rallies and whatever. And I was like, I didn't have that. I didn't have someone like that to teach me that. That's mm-hmm. you teaching me. But um, so I love it. That's beautiful. I love you know that's just one of that you know the recent one, but he's always dropping uh, knowledge. And then he said, so so going back to the tour. So then his DJ comes back. We were in I think North Carolina somewhere. Oh, did you see his last special? Yeah, of course. You know when he tells the story well, of going to the twi- lesbian bar. Uh, he said, "Oh, you know what? Nope." Nope, that's unreleased. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, I was, I was like, that was supposed to be because I watched it special. twice back to back, but He's I haven't like, seen. Oh, it. I can't tell. No, that. I can tell. You. I'm just saying. When we were in North Carolina. He tried to go to a lesbian bar. And oh, they're okay. like, they, he didn't know it was a lesbian trans bar, and they're like, we're sure. Not I mean, letting of course you, he didn't know. We're not letting you in here, Dave. Like he's like, why? Like, um, but anyway, that was the trip. Uh, I forgot. That's a new joke. So. Trauma came in. Oh, that's funny because so, yeah, yeah, yeah I like, get it. They're not letting you in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so trauma came back, the DJ. So I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go home tomorrow. And then Dave goes, Why are you leaving? And I'm like, Oh, trauma's here. You know, I'm I'm done. And he goes, No, just stay. Just do stand up. Nice. And I was, yo, my whole world. I was like, This is what I've been Bro, waiting for. That's congratulations. Yeah, thanks. When yeah. Dave calls me to just do stand up, even yeah. though the DJ is there. Yeah, that's deep. That's a goal I've been trying to get for like the last four years. That's really deep. I like the thing you're saying about community too, particularly in this day and age when there's so much um, operating against community. There's so much operating towards division yeah. and this like sort of closed off face and the antithesis of community. Yeah. And so for him to be like focusing on community, yeah. it kind of makes sense. A hundred percent, and not only does it make sense, it's needed. It's totally needed. It's needed. Um, but I like, I like, I like traveling with my friends. I like being around friends and like just talking shit with friends. Like it's I'm important. not as good as Dave, but like, like Will, me and Will went to Ohio together. Me, Will, and Artie, and they offered me to go home on the private jet. And I was like, nah, I'm gonna go with home with Artie and Will. Like we're on the same flight. It'll be like, like yeah, on the same I'm trip. Not bail yeah, on my buddy. we're yeah. together. We came together. We didn't come together because I was late. I didn't come till Saturday. But I'm saying, huh? Yeah, it's like 
No, nah, we well, it's all right. It's only an hour flight. Like it's, I've been on the private jet before. It's a fucking plane ride. It's you know, same thing. But like, and then we went and like there was these girls that I'm friends with that were on the same flight with us. They and it felt good to just like walk in the airport with them. Like I like that. Like, Airports a lot of people, are fun if it's like that. Yeah, then a lot of people a, like, especially vibe. in comedy, everybody's so solo. Mm-hmm. Everybody's solo, man. Me and Will been doing a lot of shows together lately, and it feels good to like meet Will at the club and we go on stage together. Last night we did a show. And we were promised that we were going to try all new jokes. And between every set, we were talking about the jokes. Mm, you know, and I fucking right. like, it's community. It's like, the best. It's, I don't know. A lot of people seem to like be awkward with it or it's, it is hard to arrange though. Like it's a lot like, oh, I can't make it. Like even I was a dick, couldn't make the flight. Like, oh, yeah. But you got to just, Dave just does it so well. What's your pre-show thing? Like, do you do something, like, do you have nerves and do you do, a, like, do you stand on your head and do deep breathing exercises, drink three shots? Uh, what do you do? No, I don't drink or don't... smoke. Uh, I think I just, I have to, okay, I have a, my normal demeanor is a very laid back, quiet demeanor. So I always have to <laughs> talk myself into Hype up, yeah. What I think I'm hype, I listen back to the tape, I'm like, I sound like a fucking yeah. like a funeral Stunner. director. Like, so I have to like hype myself up. And then like, it's hard when you go first, but mm. like, I like, Will went first this show in Ohio. So I get to like see shit he says and like see what the crowd is like. And like, you know, if you go out there cold, it's, the, it's, it's not the worst cause I'll do it, but it's, it's harder. Yeah. yeah. So then I um so I try to hype myself up. How do you do it? Um, I just uh, it's not that it's, I just think of like myself. I think of myself yelling or screaming. Like I don't ever like physically move around and go crazy, but I just think like, what if I was at like a, 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 a an arena, you know, seventeen thousand people, like, and I'm on the mic. Because it's funny, because like DJing. Yo, I would, it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I'm calm, cool, collected. I walk into the gig, and then when I start DJing, I go fucking nuts. Mm. And people are like, who are you? And I'm trying to get that with comedy, but uh, my, type of, my type of jokes are not rapid fire hype jokes. So I have to like tell my thoughtful jokes with some kind of hype. So what I do is I just, I put an extra New York twang on it. That's my hypeness. Oh yeah. Fuck y'all talking about. Right. Get the fuck out of here. Like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like just put some New York, Brooklyn, Bronx talk on it. Because that's where you grew up in the Bronx, right? The Bronx, yeah. And do you have any siblings? Just a younger sister. Younger bro. sister. Yeah. Not really. Nothing. Not a big family. No. Your dad passed when you were young. Yeah. How old were Still. you? Three. He died on Dave Chappelle's birthday. Oh. And I mentioned it. The entire weekend. <laughs> Anytime I said happy, anyone said happy birthday, Dave, I go, my dad also died on this day. It got kind of awkward. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, a, it's like a joke to Dave. Oh, yeah, Dave likes it. All the, like, you know, my dad died today. And he was giving his birthday speech. And I would tell people, can you, hey, can you go tap him on the shoulder? Good. I was telling other people, I, I told Andrew Yang, hey, can you tell Dave my dad also died today? And they should mm. mention that. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the, what? what the fuck are you talking about? What's Andrew Yang think about what's going on? What do you mean? Just in general. Uh, I mean, did, I didn't did you get it. Did he get deep with you at all? Not, no, not there was really? a. So, this is again what I was telling you. It was too big of a weekend. Right. There was one point when Dave, oh, when Dave holds court, it is the best. Yeah. It is the best, man. Like what? He just, whenever he starts talking and like people start gathering and everyone's like, Dave's in the back talking. I was annoyed because I was so far back and like I wasn't like it was him, Andrew Yang, Will was there, Mo Ammer. Mo Ammer's like this Palestinian comic that gets all into this like Palestinian shit and Israel. Uh, and then they start go. talking fucking, <laughs> they start talking politics or anything. And then. Uh, I was I was annoyed. I was like, I'm not gonna get any Dave time. This is why am I here? I'm about to Irish exit. And then uh, I go outside to say goodbye, and I hear Dave go. And it was a 
and a piece of space dust hit the window. And I was like, I know this story. And I just fucking left. <laughs> but like, it's an amazing story. I've heard it too many times. It's like Space dust? You know, space dust hit his private jet and made the fucking, they had to emergency land. Really? Oh, forget I said anything. Don't ruin it. Oh, okay. Don't ruin yeah, forget I said anything. Don't no no lesbian <laughs> club. Forget that too. <laughs> All right. Space dust. You don't have a mic. No one can hear you. What, what did you say, Will? I just said Cypher called me. Oh, my God. He doesn't know how microphones work. And then I said, yo, Cypher, Dave was talking. He and I are going back. And there was a moment he and I was going back and forth. And then Cypher said, I heard this. I said, no, no. <laughs> he said, you got to be there. I had a rough weekend. I didn't like it. You did, though? A nah, rough just weekend. Just a, no, 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 not enough Dave time. I was upset. I was sad. Next time. Next time. But, um. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so I didn't get to talk to Yang about any like anything deep. Yeah, he was. I saw them talking, but I didn't hear. It, but he was just a cool person. Yeah, that's the other thing. You go when you're there, you can talk all your shit, but also you could just be a human. Yeah, you know, you could just be a human. It's fun. Yeah, what do you think of New York right now and where it's going, or do you, oh, do you think it's going to? What did Seinfeld say? <laughs> I, I commented on that. <laughs> what did he say? I didn't read well, it. Oh, the Seinfeld. Well, it was the first guy, uh, James Alcher, I think is his name, wrote the piece about oh, New York's dead because they're, we're living in a post-bandwidth world, so office buildings will never be the same, and then live music and comedy mm -hmm. and theater industry and all this other stuff, and it's like more fucked than we might even think, which I tend to to agree with. And then Jerry came in with like, ah, it's not dead, you know, like, yeah. uh, and then, I, you know, and I liked what Jerry was saying. It's just that Jerry's not in a position to say it because he's got a mansion in the Hamptons. You can't yeah. say stick to it, stick to New York, don't give up on New York when you got a spot well, out where'd there. Where'd you email the, where'd you meet the, email so, the article you, from? <laughs> yeah. What? You know what I mean? Where did he email the article right, from? Right, and, and did your assistant type it? Yeah. Like, because, and whatever, I don't like being a hater for people with money because yeah. I, I think that's whack too. Yeah. And so I'm not, but in this particular case, I had to be like, dude, I live in a, you know, I've done the whole quarantine here, a uh, 500 square foot apartment yeah. in the East Village. I'm not complaining. I've had I a good it. time with it, but yeah. I am considering bugging out yeah. because some of us need to plan ahead. Yeah. Like, you know, because if it is goes into a harsher quarantine and yeah, if, uh, you know, in the winter and shit, man, I'm just not ready to do it. I like... Yeah, you know, I want to like go out. I want to be in Baja, Mexico, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Or I don't know. Yeah, I What's don't know. What's your take I, on it? I, I think. Um, I mean, I've just accepted that things change. Right. I try to do what makes me happy without hurting anyone else, and things are gonna change. So all this shit happened. Uh, I don't know the future, but I do know. The moment they let us, not let us, the moment we s found a way to sneak comedy shows, there's an audience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know if the audience is like has the antibodies and we feel like I had the antibodies. I, do I feel uh, invincible now? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, but the moment we started talking into a mic, there was every time. This hasn't been a show that's been canceled because there was no audience. It's much smaller because right. we're doing it in a backyard of a restaurant somewhere. Mm -hmm. In a pad. Last night the show had eight, I counted had eighteen people, but it was eighteen people that wanted to fucking get a comedy show. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if we could do it at the Garden or when we can, but like also, I know everything is happening to people right now, so. It's the most important thing in your life. But we've had plagues before. We've had right. diseases. We had the Spanish flu. I'm sure like I'm sure you weren't allowed to group up during the Spanish flu and then a couple of years later there was it's fine. It was back. You know what I mean? But that all depends on if our reaction to this whole thing or the reaction to this thing is really to save people from a potentially deadly virus or a way to take away civil liberties and implement more yeah things of harder harsher control yeah like it depends on which side of that equation you think reality it's, it's probably both it's probably a little bit of both yeah, it's probably both 
Yeah, and well, so and so at a, I think eventually freedom isn't given. You got to take freedom. Yeah. So I think Power eventually people have to sort of disagree with the lockdowns on a certain level or something because I don't know that those will end otherwise. Um. Yeah. I'm. I. I'm. I'm for the disagreement of lockdown. But then I can't be get behind these white militia dudes with AKs. I mean, with AR 15s on the steps of the Capitol. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want lockdown to be over. I don't think that's the right way. I think they're sending a different message. Also, if they get lockdown to be over, kudos to you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I also want it to be over. I don't think it has to be like AKs, like on, on the you know steps of a building but it could be like just people start getting on with putting on shows in spite and 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 facing the social well, shame it'll be more like people not being oh, yeah. super terrified to get the social shame like how dare you do yeah, a yeah, show yeah. i don't give a fuck you saying oh, no, that I don't care it's got to be like i don't give a fuck about you saying that and then once more and more people start doing that how dare you doing a show won't have power uh, anymore yeah the problem is i mean like i would do indoor shows right and it's like you know, you're coming in at your own risk. Yeah, I would too. I, and that's how I think we should proceed. I think but the elderly is- immune compromised, absolutely quarantine. We should have organizations of people giving them all their like basic needs. Yeah. And if that's what you want to do, we should support everybody's right to do that. But 100%. for the rest of everybody should just yeah. get on with life. What I heard though, the the argument to that is the, um, the, uh, the hospitals getting overworked. Mm. Which I I don't really think about that. I don't work in a hospital. What the fuck do I care? But if we go if we do that, apparently one of the arguments is that that will make the medical system get fucking bombarded. That's what they think. Yeah, but but on the opposite side of that, if we don't start doing that, the amount of homelessness and starvation and the and and the devastation from the economic collapse is going to be so, something we've never even fucking seen before. Like, so then, what do you? So do? it's like both ways you go. It's going to be calamity. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but and I think personally, the calamity is harsher if we continue this mode of like frozen yeah, but that, lockdown. But that calamity is much easier to turn a blind eye to for yeah. the people who don't want to deal with it. I you guess, I mean? apparently. I think it is for now, but I think very soon and in short order, it'll be harder and harder to turn a blind eye to it, unfortunately. With the aggressive homeless men attacking us? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to get, gonna get, it's gonna yeah. get crazy. And once it gets crazy, it'll be like, okay, this is the world we live in now. Like, what the fuck? What, what, why did we do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then, how do we turn it around? And then around? also... You're a you're on your way to a, a anti police protest. Yeah, and you get fucking mobbed and beat the fuck up by some aggressive homeless crackheads. Right, and then you call nine one one. And you gotta call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the cop exactly. is like, wait, fa- the cop is like, Facetime me. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we're not coming for you. Yeah, you we don't can't. even want us anymore. Exactly. Like you're, you're wearing Careful a black lives matter. Shirt. Oh, the cops are one hundred percent holding the city hostage right now. They're like. They're like, oh, you don't want us? Right. Have the summer's yours. Right. Have at it, guys. Have at it, have have at it gents. <laughs> right. The summer's yo, yours. they're so slow now. And then yeah. I, yo, they I don't see them anywhere. All right. They used to be everywhere. Right. And they're like, and then when when Jerry comes back, and all the people from the Hamptons, eventually, I don't know when. When school I'll, starts, they're gonna all come back because their kids go to school here. I mean, supposedly some will come back. Some, some. Of, yeah, some, some. A lot will not. When that when they when the upper echelon comes back to New York finally from Cape Cod, Hamptons, mm-hmm. Aspen, Florida, Florida, wherever the fuck they were, yeah. they come back and they see what Manhattan is looking like, they will make sure Reality check. these cops get back to where they need to be. Mm. And they're gonna have all the meetings and the cops are gonna the unions are gonna go, Hey, when you were gone, these people try to get rid of us. Fuck them. Get back to work. What do you need to get back to work? Mm. Well, we need to make sure they can never defund us. Mm. Cool. Got it. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Place this. Fix that. You guys are safe. Back to work. Mm. But gonna- the ultra rich have private security and have like, right. you know, like right. they don't need it as badly as like yeah. the, the lower income people who actually is negatively yeah, but that's, impacting. That's- no, there's a difference between ultra rich. Right. I'm talking about if you make. You're talking about normal rich. 
yeah, if you make five hundred thousand, you're you. not ultra rich. Oh, that's true. But you have enough money to go. Hey, why is this fucking homeless guy on my doorstep? That's true. Like, get this guy out of here. Yeah. My my where I live in Battery Park City. Yeah. Never I'm in Tribeca. There's so much. Never. I love that people. area. I run that area all there's the time. One guy camped yeah. out, and I'm like, is anyone <laughs> gonna say anything about this? <laughs> <laughs> one guy. <laughs> And I guess, <laughs> yeah, but then that one guy becomes two. I guess they used three. to say something. I'm sure. I'm sure a homeless guy has tried to sleep under that building overpass before, and someone was like, "Hey, get the fuck out of here!" But now he's still there every night, camped out. I'm like, I don't want to say it, but can you say it? Like, uh, I need a Karen to come over here uh, and fucking <laughs> shut this shit down. I need Karen. <laughs> Shut it down, man. Hey, so do you miss the music business? Because also you have such a huge like story in the music. We barely even touched all that stuff. The Jay Z and you know breaking Rihanna. No, and all not that. The, I don't miss the business. I miss music. Right. I miss the 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 fun parts of it. Like businesses, what? like DJing in a nightclub on a Saturday night. Yeah, you know, like, people coming together. Yeah, like I used to fucking be a wild DJ. I had a lot of fun, but uh, the music changed. The style of DJing changed a lot. Um, I still DJ when I get... I only do things that I like. You know what I'm saying? If you want me to do a 90s party, oh, we're going to have a blast. Mm. Like, I DJ uh, the Impractical Jokers Cruise. Wow, that's cool. Which is like... <laughs> The Staten Island people of every state, like whatever your Staten yeah. Island is, that's who comes. That's what's funny. And I mean, yo, They're I play popular everything. Fuck. Yeah, I play Bon Jovi and and uh, Guns N' Roses and like Frank Sinatra and fucking uh uh uh, uh like um disco. You know what I'm saying? Like and hip hop too. Like I play like they love everything. Yeah. Um, but I like to do fun parties. I can't do yeah. these like bottle service clubs anymore that's what ruined it for me hey speaking of the 90s did you see that batman trailer not to go all over the place i did because there's something in the way nirvana's on the soundtrack it's really really cool check that out anyway wait what what, batman what the The new new batman with robert robert pattison as batman really yeah the trailer just came out who whose movie is it matt reeves is directing what does he do uh, what does he do it looks like Seven. That's the vibe of Seven. The tra- really? trailer, yeah. What is the? It has are, you a Nirvana, a, are you a Batman comic book fan? It has it, a Nirvana it's, song. It's set in Batman Year Two, which is in the comic books has a certain storyline oh, where no. he's he's already established as Batman, but he's not full on Batman. Mm. So it's like somewhere in the middle oh, there. I like that. So like in the in the Christopher Nolan trilogy, before it's like, that probably. I guess it's right. No, after, but that's the origin of him though. So right. in like somewhere in there, in the middle, yes, the middle he's not that. full on. Right, uh, da- the Dark Knight is the third film. Right, he's before the police know him. He's kind of working with them, but he doesn't have trusted. his full yeah. suit. He's uh, not doesn't have all dope. the gadgets. That's how, no, yeah, I would check I was that a out. Huge yeah. Batman. Fan. Well, what does that have to do with the nineties? No, it's just because it's Nirvana. I thought you might have seen it. Oh, I, I was no. surprised to hear Nirvana on the soundtrack of it, and it's one of their slow songs. So, is it their actual song or someone remade it? Yeah, no, they no, no, both. It's, Nirvana. it's oh. both. It's both. It starts out. It's like just this assault. Like it's like underneath the bridge. It's like it's like a slow Anna. version. Yeah. So, da, da. Remember that song? Yeah. It's, uh, and uh, yep. something in the way, right? In the thing. And then it changes. And, the, and then they made a big like orchestra yeah, thing, and it's dope, dude. It goes like dun 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 dun, and it, it I makes you think a, like, damn, a, um, Kurt Cobain is a genius. Yeah. Like he could have been a classical composer. It makes you go like, oh fuck. Yeah. That's why they were so good. This guy was so fucking talented. Yeah. Anyway, I hit no, but I, I noticed <laughs> that trend lately where. They're taking all these old the songs sl- and doing like slow these version. slow singing. Yeah. yeah, but my favorite one is every from trailer. The movie, um, it, but commercials too, like car commercials will have like a like a fast eighty song and they like slow it down. Like if a guy sang it, they'll have like a girl sing it in like this slower, or like um, there's one, there's one sp- specific one. Uh, Hallelujah has been used a million like times. It's like like Take On Me or one I of those type it. of I songs. I love that song. Oh, but it's like a, a slow. Take that was in The Last me. of Us Part Two in the video game. Take they used on Take me. On Me, a slow acoustic slow, yeah. version. It was beautiful. But my favorite is is the the what's the movie? The black movie. Who, the guy who made Get Out. The second uh-huh. Us. Is it Us? Uh-huh. Yeah, that well, was. They took I got one. five on it. Uh huh. Did you I hear got that? Five on I got five on it, and then it's like this orchestra, like. 
dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dun, dun. Yo, it's sick. It's sick when they do that. Sick, yeah. They, I guess that's the new. Because now it's like you can fucking chop anything up in a computer and just make it like rearrange it and all. Mm hmm. So what what are you working on now? Like, where do you see your future going? Like, what is your uh, more focus on comedy or what are you thinking? Yeah. Comedy's it. Comedy's it. Uh, okay, this is what I realized. This is a, mind you, this is a pretty good podcast, guys. Oh, thanks, man. This is fucking good shit. Well, you haven't been into the secret room. That's where we take you at the end. So no, like a, that's why you won't like it anymore. Uh, this is all a setup for the fucking like secret room. <laughs> like then you don't like it. Anymore. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Because, anyway, go ahead. I thought. I thought I would be on the radio for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and a DJ for the rest of my life. It's all I wanted to do. Then I got into comedy and realized it wasn't the actual DJing that I loved, which I do love, but it was the entertaining. Because uh -huh. all the things I got from DJing, I now get from comedy. It's a little bit different, but pretty much. And all my skills I had from DJing, I use in comedy. I hype up a crowd. I read a room. Right. I timing is everything. Yeah. I was very particular about the way I play songs and where I play them. Where now I'm particular about which jokes you do, don't do, where you do them. Right. It's all the same. In my mind, it's all mapped the same. Mm. So I realized I was a enter. I loved entertaining, not necessarily just hip hop DJing. And then I um. I started incorporating DJing into my stand-up, and that's been going very okay. well. Like, nobody can DJ while telling jokes. Now, I've never met anyone who could do it. Well, that's, that's some new shit right there. It's like I just tie in my jokes and my punchlines to music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, now you could get, like, a small... Like, all DJing is in a laptop and a little DJ controller. Or an iPad, even, maybe. Yeah. So, I've been... um been working on that i did i did some headlining gigs right before the pandemic where i was like working on like doing an hour with that i didn't do music the whole time but it was like a big part of it um but i just want to like i want to get great at stand up um and i want to like write tv shows and be on tv shows but like i don't want to be like i don't want to have like I don't want to. I've been thinking about it. I don't think. I don't know if I want to have my own show like a like a Everyone Loves Raymond, because then that's all you do. I mean, mind you, you get mega rich. You but get that money. I like doing a lot of different things. I want to be the guy that's in all these movies and TV shows, and I say that one line that's <laughs> your favorite line, and anytime you see me in the street. You, you can that. do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you exactly. can do it. Yeah. Every time Rob Schneider it, and Rob every Sandler movie. Yeah. You can do it. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Good call, dude. <laughs> and like, you that's show up. favorite Rob Schneider. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Whether he's playing the. Uh, yeah. yeah. All of them. All of them. Yeah. yeah. So I just want, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Like, oh, he's in this. I'm in this, I'm in that, I'm in this. You have been that guy to some degree, too. Just across Not the a, world. I mean, just across entertainment. Yeah, behind the scenes. Behind, behind the, the scenes, scenes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, somebody told me to watch the movie, um, the documentary. Uh, what's the movie? The guy, oh, the black something. The Black Godfather? The Black Godfather? Yeah, I think that's the documentary. I don't know. I don't black know if Godfather. I heard of it. By who? You know what I'm talking about? He, he, uh, people said they, they, that documentary reminded them of me. And mind you, that guy was way bigger. He like he was like this deal maker. He okay. connected all these people. And like eventually got to like politics and connected Clinton and the Bush. Black God but Father, yeah. they're like, Who yo, the it? way I operate, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Jay Z example because we love those. Depicts the executive Clarence Avent. Yeah, Clarence. Yeah. Okay. I I went to SNL when uh, Jay Z was performing when he dropped the album Four Four Four. I, I love that album. Yeah, good. Good I, album. I liked it a lot. Really good. And uh, I went there to hang out with, with Che, uh, Michael Che, and then um, I saw Jay-Z perform his first song. Then his second song, he brought out Damian Marley. Right. And I, it just hit me. I forgot. I'm watching him perform, and I go, oh, shit. I introduced Damian Marley to Jay-Z in, like, Oh, five or some shit. Yeah, at BB King's, right? At BB King's. Yeah. Oh, you know the story. This I guy know. does his research. It's yeah. a little scary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I introduced them to each other. I heard that story too. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking, 
Like, and I was like, but I my when I heard that story, I was like, I don't remember Jay Z playing BB King in two thousand five. No, he, wasn't he didn't playing. play. He oh. was just there. He wasn't playing. It was it, it was a it was a Foxy Brown. They do industry movie. shows there. Like yeah. they'll have like they they'll have to, big. Yeah. I saw, like I, saw, I saw Mary J. Blige at BB King. Yeah. Like, they do for instance. Shows, yeah. They do shit to, like that. He was on his executive shit. He wasn't yeah. really. So he was just backstage. Yeah, and I and I was a I I wasn't a I wasn't an A and R for him yet. That's what got me the job. I introduced him to Damian Oh, Martin. That's cool. He's got this song, it's called Welcome to Jam Rock. It's on fire in the Caribbean world. I think it's gonna be a big record. And then it and he tried to sign him, didn't work out, but Obviously, I told him about it, and the record blew up, worldwide hit, you know, and he gets the Grammy and all that, and he was like, yo, Syph knew, Syph yeah. knew, and then, he, and then I got an A&R job from that. He didn't sign him because uh, Damian Marley didn't want to sign to a hip-hop label? The family. Uh, the, the Marley, the Marley family. family. Yeah, they were like, no, we don't. We don't do that. Literally, they were like, we don't sign to rappers. Right. No, stop it. <laughs> well, they are kind of like royalty, though, you know? They're, the Mar- yeah. we're the, they're like, we're the Marley. <laughs> they're the Marley. Yeah. I mean. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's we make, funny. We make money like Bob is still selling more than you. Like, what, what's your attraction to <laughs> Caribbean things? Like, because Rihanna, you like the fact that she was Caribbean or came out at first with a Caribbean song. Before she was no, pop. I think I think would... it's reverse. It's because I was like known as like this Caribbean hip hop guy. Oh, okay. They brought her to me. I see the people. Yeah, they were like, who who should we introduce her to? Like, oh, Cipher definitely. Mm. Um, I don't. I just. I just like the energy of it. I like Caribbean music, uh, dance hall music. Like, uh, it's just it's hip hop. It's same as hip hop. It's hip hop comes from dance hall. But what do you, um, is but but kind of lighter though in a way or something or has a lightness to it. No, not the not the not dance hall. Like I mean, it's joyous. No, 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 no. No, some of it, yes. Yeah. Not not Bounty Killer is not. There's no joy <laughs> in Bounty Killer. Like, it's it's. Is rough street ghetto music. I mean, I like it all. But it's celebrating in a way. There's a lot of it that is. A lot of energy. But there's also just grimy street shit. And because it's Jamaica, you think beach pina colada, but there's fucking (laughs) real gangster shit going on there. Right. You know? Uh, But the energy of the way they party, the way they party is uh, nothing compares to it. I'll go to a Caribbean party any day. What is it? It's like a spirit. Man, they go nuts. There's no inhibitions. They go all out. Everyone dances. You'll see guys doing dance routines, like gangsters. Like they, the gun is falling out of their waistband, <laughs> but they're doing these dances, like choreographed on dances. On the floor. Oh, let me pick up my. Yeah, it reminds me of that Michael Jackson video <laughs> where they like the knife fight. I oh yeah, yeah, bad. yeah. Is it no? It's and it's bad. From, they have the, the, the whole nah, subway. Man, it was from Beat It. Beat, Beat It. It's no, music video. Su- Beat It. It reminds me of Beat It. Wasn't bad in the subway. Oh, bad is the subway, yeah. but beat it is also beat it a with fight. a knife yeah. fight. Dancing. Where, they were, where they hold hands. And yeah, and they hold oh, hands, okay. and then it's in like my mind that's like, bad. Like, <laughs> no, bad it, is bro. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Remember Wesley Snipes was the bad guy. Yeah, Wesley. <laughs> but yeah, Caribbean music. Oh man, they it's nuts. That's talking about Caribbean music. Yeah. Yes, Will. You have a, Car- a Caribbean yeah, dude now right you have here. To say something well, no, Nigeria. Yeah. Got a lot of flavor like the food, he said. But yeah, they go nuts. You watch, you watch the verses thing? You ever heard of the verses? What's that? This thing that's on Instagram that, that Swiss Beats and Timbaland started. When Corona hit, oh, okay. they did this verses thing where they have two artists go on Instagram live and kind of. It's like battle, but it's friendly. Okay. And they're playing their hits back and forth. I see. And the first couple were, you remember the first ones? Uh, it was, it was, uh, what's the name? That kept, uh, um, uh, what's the name? Um, Babyface and what's the name? Yeah, Babyface and Teddy Riley. Okay. So that was one of the early ones, though. like, uh, and Neo. Yeah, that one, I don't even know if that was done. I think they did that on their own. Anyway, the late the the the, well, they, no, they, the big one was they had Babyface and Teddy Riley, and then they had uh, uh, Erica Badu and Jill Scott, and then there was another hip hop one that was really good. That's pretty high up. No, that's what I'm getting to. There was another one before that that was then people were like, yo, you watching verses? No, before that, the early ones. 
So T Pain and Lil John happened, yeah. So then now it's blowing up. It's becoming like a thing. Mm. It went viral or whatever. Yeah, but it's all Instagram. It's, okay. You know, when you do Instagram live, it's it split splits the screen. screen. Yeah, 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 I hate that. And then they, <laughs> and like the sound was fucked Terrible. up. And like, it was, people weren't getting the people didn't Delays. know how to connect the, your Instagram to actual the audio play through whatever right then they announced they're doing Beanie Man and Bounty Killer and these are, these are two Jamaican artists that had beef many they used to battle on stage for years and years and years beef where it got like people died back in the day wow they're cool now but it was it was ugly back in the 90s Biggie Tupac level but they did the first verses where they were in the same room together because they were in Jamaica and they did it in the same room, and they basically were like performing. Uh huh. It is the most incredible thing to watch. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, you gotta watch it. Yeah. And the first, the first twenty minutes, it's kind of boring because they were like playing like songs that weren't that big, and they were like, it's not performing. You're supposed to just play songs. You have a DJ, you play, he plays, but you can't get Bounty Killer and Beanie Man not to perform. Like if there's mics and people like. And they started like kind of singing along, mm -hmm. and then they Full one was on. looking at the other one, and then they would out try to do outdo them, and then it got so fucking crazy. What happened? It, 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 but you'll see the energy when I'm talking about Caribbean music. Right. You you could not know any of the songs, and you'll see that they were going ham. Like it's they like an aggressive in. party spirit. Yeah. Right. Aggressive. Yeah. Party yeah. at eleven. Party at eleven. <laughs> and then turned up to eleven. So, man, thank you for doing this. Oh, man, thanks for having me. It's been Why do you guys have a Canadian flag on your table? Is this it's, is this I just propaganda? needed a map to cover it, and that was the only thing in the back, in the back room where we're okay. not going. I All found right. this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really not any of the shots, so no one can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing here? Can we do an underground comedy show in here? So oh, yeah. I kind of wanted, I was talking to Will. The only problem is audience because I could film a multicam full on comedy thing and put it like live stream it, ticket it, whatever. But I feel without the energy of the audience. No, I'm talking about let's do an illegal Maybe. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Legal speak easy Resistance. Show. Come on, speak uh, easy. Uh, well, Let's we, get music we can talk well. about it off air. There's other options and other venues. Should we talk about it on camera? Uh, yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> but if you're saying 18 people, I mean, it's totally doable if that's enough for you. So to, what we did last night was. To, to feed good. off the audience, yeah. I think with 10 strong people, you could do something. Yeah. They need it. Yeah, we all need it. I mean, humanity is finding it needs certain things that it didn't yeah, know it man. needed. And we we need to come together. It too. felt like comedy was the first thing to pop back up everywhere. Well, here's the problem. Like this versus thing. We all needed music. They found a way to take your music and it's uh oh, meter. Oh no. Um, they found a way to take music, but a lot of it was nostalgic. Right. Comedy is uh, is about surprise, mm -hmm. so that's why we don't like to stream our comedy because if so many people see it, we can't go do the show for oh, them. Oh, it's that whole no, don't record it. Yeah, well, yeah. you got to right. treat it as a special. <sighs> yeah. yeah, that's true. You need that reaction. Yeah. I don't know. I think we need to start rebel organizations and do these like speakeasy I shows. But then here's the the problem lately is that the the state liquor authority came in and told people if you do that you're going to take your liquor license away. Yeah. You have nothing if you don't have your liquor license. That's true. So we have to do it in a place where like there's no risk yeah, we have to, in the woods. Yeah, we got to do it in the woods. People have a license. <laughs> right. We got to find a way to do it in the outside somewhere where someone doesn't own or, or I don't know in an alley somewhere a fucking. So this episode is coming out this week. When can people see you perform next? Oh, in some, I always in some backyard somewhere. Yeah. Or g give us your Instagram and all that. You're supposed to put it in the beginning. I, f I forgot my cardinal rule. Always shout your Instagram or your social media in the beginning of the episode. Oh, people won't tune out to this one. This one was great. Oh, they tuned out already. Nah, man. They're all <laughs> listening still. They're all right it's, here. Save for Will. 100%. Save for Will. You'll edit it in. Put a Chiron on when I first got yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just at Cypher Sounds. That's my Instagram. I pretty much run everything from Instagram. Yeah, me nice. too. Um, it's easier that way. I want to do just, more, but it's like it's so easy. I know. It's like I get torn. I get torn about 
Should I be on TikTok and Snapchat? Yeah. I want and a YouTube Twitch. Cha- I want to like build my YouTube Me channel too. a lot more. Like, but well, then Dave doesn't even have anything. I know it's wild. I know Dave. Yeah, I you, know. Yeah. But there's also other people who don't have anything. Exactly, like, and then you're like, maybe that's the way to go. So, but I also do like it. You need it's something. Fun. You need it is. Something. It's fun to communicate, and you can. <laughs> it's a tool. It's fun. You can also ha- like inspire and help people, and I know that's important to oh, you. I, I know that's that. like that's little, your vibe, right? I like, get a lot of that. Yeah. I get more reaction of when I put up inspirational shit. Me than, like, too, dude. Shit. Like especially yeah. if I just like talk, like I get more views if I just like do one of those videos where I say like, "Hey, here's how I feel today." Yeah. And, like you know, yeah. trying to be helpful or whatever. Yeah. You know? I get a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it doesn't carry over to people coming to the goddamn show. <laughs> um, We're gonna change all that. Man, but I I don't want to hate on all these YouTube stars. Right. But like they definitely figured something out. But they did. You know who I like? Infinite Waters. But I don't know. I don't know who that is. He's like breathing in that good ass prana, baby. Slow motion this side. <laughs> you never heard yeah. this guy? No, he he's that. great. He's like a self helpy guy, but he's cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't watch any of that stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I also like. I don't know. I'm older. Do I pretend to be in this young man's game? Do I live my life? I don't know. It's I'm torn about it. What do you mean, in young man's game? Like TikTok? TikTok, yeah. yeah. I, I, I found out you. about TikTok a long time ago because I write with younger artists sometimes yeah. and Your they were up on it? TikTok. And so yeah. I I like had that insider info on yeah. it and didn't jump into it. Yeah. And I, now I'm like, fuck, I knew about this shit a year ago. I could have had a big follow in order if I would have gone into it then. But. No, but I don't. It's weird because I don't like it. Yeah, I don't really like it either. So, like, do I get a big following something I don't like? Like, then no. I'm going yeah. back to. Then I'm going back to my breaking my cardinal rule. Like, if I'm not having fun, what's the point, you know? You got to have fun. That's what Abraham Hicks says. I was telling you about her. She's like this, like, she's like this medium that translates this group of people, all this, like, stuff about manifesting what's in your vortex. And it's really interesting stuff. And what she always says is you got to, like, you know, enjoy life. That's that's number one don't make don't make it a drag like make sure you're like celebrating your life and enjoying it because that's how good things will come to you anyway for with that energy it's number one number one right what's her name abraham hicks that's a guy's name i know but it's a lady it's interesting it's like trust me cover it's uh it's like that's her going back to the the woke thing it's not what it is abraham hicks it's like uh it's actually like stands for a a group I think of a group of people that she is a medium for. Mm. But it's interesting. Mm. You, I think you'll like it. If you like Joe Dispenza, and then she doesn't really sell you anything. So. I got to figure out. I got to get Joe Dispenza. I got to get a, I got to figure out. I got to need a hack to get his, whatever he's selling, because okay, well, that shit. You are the placebo, is and and, and his, he's got guided meditations for yeah, free check on YouTube. Out. Check yeah. those out. Also, the thing to check that out shit is, is hard to grasp, though, man. What just like uh, just listening to him talk? You got to listen yeah. a few times. That he's saying some next level shit. That's man. true. Yeah. It's, you got to really think about what he's saying. Like, well, he hard. healed his whole spine. Yeah. He was, he got hit by a truck yeah, and his doc. Him. Yeah, he healed his whole spine through just the power of his mind. Like like you like you, you have to, to ima- and Abraham Hicks is on a similar tip where it's like yeah. you have to imagine yourself healed or whatever yeah, and yeah. and if you do that enough without doubting it the power of it's the power of your mind you yeah. are the placebo like yeah. the reason placebos work is because your mind is telling you it's working right. so it works some, yeah. so that right there yeah proves the theory that your mind is powerful and can heal you and what about um you ever listen to gary v oh yeah i like him i too. like gary v yeah. but he's it's kind of straight up. He's more straightforward. Joe Dispenza, you more gotta, magical. You got yeah, more mystical. You gotta sit and go. He's like, yeah, if you if you think it, your mind doesn't know the difference between if it's gonna happen or if it already happened. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I gotta rewind this one. <laughs> well, it's also like when you wake up in the day and you like first thing you do is look at your Instagram and like you reset yourself, but like exactly where you are in your life right here, right now. What you want to do is wake up and transcend where you are and imagine yourself in a better place and like do these like rituals that are like yeah. like bringing you to a higher place so don't go right to your phone and go well what's my identity currently because yeah. then you just reinforce that and you keep recreating right. 
the, the, phone. the other good thing to do is Ho'oponopono, which is I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. It's this like Hawaiian mantra of forgiveness and, Will loves that. and self-responsibility. Ooh. And basically, <laughs> it, it what, what else it can do is like it can like clear your like the space so you can live from inspiration rather than from memory. It's a similar thing. It's like if you incorporate that as well because then you sort of forgive all the traumas in your life and you just I get to like reinvent yourself from where you are here right now and also Ooh. then like a mad and then you're free to not be thinking of resentments of the past. You're free to dream of a of a bigger future. Here's my one problem. Okay. And then I'll go. Okay. Well, one problem with that. Oh, is you're that not leaving. I actually, agree. But, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. I agree. Oh yeah. Fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're not really going anywhere. But. Joseph, let him think that okay, he's yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree. Sorry. Yes, you're gonna go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I agree with that. I'm all for it. He's right. leaving. I want in on it. Yeah. The problem is the other side of me is I just got a new intern. His name is Jared. He's sitting right there. Shout out, Jared. I can't Peace, be Jared. too positive of a person because I want to emotionally abuse him. You know what I'm saying? The way I got abused as an intern. So like, uh -uh. if I get too positive. If you get too deep too fast. If I get too positive and a good person, yeah. he doesn't get the he doesn't, shit He doesn't toughen out of, you know up. I mean? Yeah. So you're doing it for him. Like whatever you guys are gonna do to me, do it to him first. Of right. course. No, he's definitely <laughs> not leaving either. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> ah. All right. All right, so, man. Well, uh, thank you, man. Come, oh, man. Thanks for having me. Come God to where I'm dude. from, podcast episode 99, Cypher Sounds. 99. Ma magical, dude. Follow magical him, 99. Support us. Yeah. Will Sylvan. Who's gonna be Darren. 100? Oh, we're DMC. trying. DMC. We're trying to get Daryl. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, DMC did something last week. He showed me. Or we're trying. Yeah, we're. we're so Joe was we're also out. singing on that bill, and we asked yeah. him after. And uh, oh, that's dope. His, yeah, that's who we want. I mean, that's how be great. That would be an amazing. Number one hundred. It would be that the would be amazing. Please, universe. Thank you. I actually, I'll just say thank you, universe, for making yeah. it happen, and we'll see. You. Or you just call Chappelle and tell him. You know, <laughs> and then it'll be Chappelle. He don't do shit. All right, <laughs> guys. Thank you, God everyone. bless, man. Peace. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated.